And let's bring in Alex Ritchin, who's co-CEO of the Executive Council of Australian Jury. Thanks for joining us, Alex. Um, Thank you, Chris. Uh, you, you must be just so frustrated now because these universities, they don't speak with one voice. Some of them uh, speak absolutely weak nonsense. Other than, others talk tough a little bit, but none of them seem to be doing anything. Well, I think that speaks to the lack of leadership from the very top. If you had the Federal Education Minister early on, the second these encampments began to appear in our country, say this is not on. There is no reason why anyone should be camping on university grounds. Action will be taken. Government needs to set the guardrails of what's reasonable and unreasonable conduct. And when there's an absence of leadership, it allows the VCs, the vice chancellors, to go campus by campus, each with their own approach. And some, as you say, have taken a kind of laissez-faire approach to this, wait and see, hope it fizzles out. Others have been more determined and more confrontational in their approach. But ultimately, overall, the response has been weak, and this is why we are where we are. There's been this very logical, obvious progression from protests to encampments now to the occupation of buildings and what we saw in the streets of Melbourne last night when you had a very peaceful, a beautiful, multi-ethnic, multi-religious gathering in support of the Jewish community against anti-Semitism. And, the, and on the other side, once again, you saw thuggery, violence, racism, homophobia. It's plainly obvious which side stands for what, but unfortunately, some still abound in a moral fog. I just want to get you on two related issues. One, I, I spoke at the top about ignorance. There's a lot of ignorance uh, displayed by these pro-Palestinian, pro-Hamas protesters. But I mentioned a week or so ago that the United Nations had revised downwards its tally of innocent civilian deaths in Gaza by almost 50%. Now, this is after fueling all sorts of protests and hatreds uh, and rhetoric against uh, Israel and Jewish people based on these highly inflated numbers. Now, of course, we all deplore any needless death of civilians, but the fact that they had inflated these figures by almost 50% must worry you deeply. Well, there's no surprise there. And from the very beginning, we've been warning media, do not uncritically quote these figures, because this comes from the Hamas, Gaza, Ministry of Health, which is a, an arm of a terrorist regime. And of course, they have every reason to inflate their numbers for propaganda purposes. We always said that they don't distinguish between militants and civilians, that the numbers didn't bear out with the reality of what was happening on the ground, and people didn't listen. And you had journalists like John Lyons on ABC making outrageous statements like, Israel is killing more children a day than any other force yeah. in recent history. You've had claims of genocide, most recently by Senator Fatima Payman. And this is the result of that. You know, yeah. when you have this disinformation blushing around and no one takes leadership and ownership of this and calls it out for the nonsense that it is. And this it's is It's just wrong. It's just wrong. They've got to stick right. to the facts. Now, and just finally, I've got to get your thoughts on, on the death, uh, apparently by an accidental uh, helicopter crash of the Iranian President Raisi. Now, this is good riddance to a bad man. This is a man who's funded terrorism against Israel, has funded this... October the 7th atrocity that led to the war that's uh, occurring at the moment. He's a man who persecutes all the women in Iran. But my question to you is whether you believe his death will make things more unstable for Israel in the region or will there be no change? Look, it's difficult to tell. If there's a power struggle that ensues, it's difficult to know who will emerge in his place. If this is the beginning of the end of the Iranian regime and hopefully a period of actual genuine freedom for the Iranian people, and peace and calm in the Middle East, that would be a wonderful thing. But as you said, the Iranian regime and this president has been responsible for so much death and misery in the Middle East. We know that the Iranians trained Hamas in the months leading up to the October 7 atrocities. We know what they're doing in Yemen. We know what they're doing in Syria and Lebanon. This is a regime hell-bent on destruction, war and chaos. And the fewer of them that are around, the better.